I loved the show, by the way. I just can't. I, I'm, I'm already desperate to see the next episode. Honestly, I just think it's. You can just tell already. It's one of those brilliant TV series. It's going to have everyone gripped. Um, I was wondering how you came to be involved in in this show and in, in in this series. So HBO asked me to whether I was interested in doing that when David Kelly had written the first episode of uh, the first draft of the first episode, and he had written it for Nicole Kidman. And, um, and that was a very compelling uh, package, of course, the two of them. And then I read it and I really enjoyed it. And I was very drawn to the world. I was very drawn to her character. And I also felt that it could either go down the drama lane or more the thriller lane. And I wanted to go down the thriller lane. Mm. And he agreed with that. So then I kind of got involved and everything happened quite quickly, actually, mm-hmm. after that point. Do you remember when you read the scripts for the first time? Did you go on a kind of similar experience to one that we go on? Were you kind of fe- were you in that sort of similar boat where you were just sort of desperately waiting to find out what happened next? Well, he'd only written episode one. Oh, he'd only written. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, um, so, so I was I was desperate for him to to write more and have <laughs> me read it, <laughs> but. Uh, um, but we, but but we were also consecutively talking about cast and talking about and 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 obviously we were talking about what he thought was going to happen and um, uh, but I was very excited about it. Yes. Yeah, as a as a sort of filmmaker, you've 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 dabbled in so many different genres and, and different kind of styles of movie. But do you, do you quite enjoy uh, um, doing sort of projects like this where you really get to play with the kind of of audiences perceptions it's a real kind of master um it's, it's the craft of kind of dropping in little kind of um things here and there to kind of get us guessing and do you quite enjoy that kind of that kind of power that comes with being in control of our of our perceptions like that very much so very much so i mean it's sort of it kind of is the essence of what i do it's you know it's that sort of how do you when do you tell what how do you what 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 is the perception? What how much does this character know, and how much does this character don't know, and what do the audience suspect they all know, and all of that? It's very it's a lot of fun, and it's it's a little bit like having a few chess boards running at the same time, and um, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, because I remember I was watching because um, I was very late to the party, but I only watched Breaking Bad recently, and there was something that happened right in the very final episode that I can recall was something that was definitely plotted right in the first series. So there'd been about kind of fifty episodes in between, and I'm just wondering about when you do a TV series, do you do you direct each episode as an episode, or do you almost direct it as one kind of six hour movie and kind of treat it as? I mean, like yeah, when you're doing something in, ep- in episode two, do you will you put something in and think, ah, oh, that will be come up again in episode five do you do you look at it on those terms always thinking one step ahead well it's it's totally shot like a six hour long film Mm -hmm. so on one on one morning we'll be shooting a scene from episode six and in the afternoon we'll be shooting a scene from episode two so it's all I mean it's completely cross-boarded um and I totally think about it as a very long movie. And I totally think about it with, with that kind of overview of all the elements and, and where does it lead at the end and how does it impact any given moment. Um, but, you know, as a director, you're also very keen on every detail. I mean, you could say the devil is in the detail. So you have that overview, but you also totally focus on on, on that moment of that moment being very exciting being very sad being very funny or whatever it needs to be and so so it's it's the mix of the two mm. yeah but I mean you must be thrilled then as well that you're obviously directing all six because in tv sometimes you might get three or four directors on a series and like you said when you treat it as one six hour movie it, it must make it quite hard for directors and other in series when they come in and just do an episode here and there because they haven't got that ability to to spread their ideas across multiple episodes I've never done that, and I don't know that that I would really want to do that. I I, I mean, for me, it's very important to to kind of um, have that singular vision on it. I mean, I think a really successful TV show is like a film. It needs to have a singular vision, and the singular vision needs to 
to be that's where the writing and the direction needs to overlap. It needs to be a cohesive singular vision, which the writer and the director are working on exactly the same project. Mm -hmm. And so, no, I don't think I could ever do that. I don't think I could ever just jump in and do an episode up because it's so much like, like what I do is so much like getting the casting right getting all the elements right, making sure that all those elements are playing in the same direction so that the, the final expression is going to be very strong and very uncompromising. Mm. It's interesting because you obviously were treating this like a kind of six hour movie, but do you think about future series? Is, do you, is there anything you might put it, you might be directing in say episode three or four where you think to yourself that could come and get up again in a future series or, or is that getting a bit too overwhelming when you start thinking beyond series one? Cause you've already got about six hours kind of whirling around in your mind. No, I can think of I can think of elements in you know I can I you know I can fantasize about uh, um, season two of this one absolutely, but but um, can I can I could I see myself jumping into a show and just do one episode in the middle of something? I don't think so. No. I, I mean, no. I don't know. I I just don't. I'm I'm so obsessed with what I'm doing. I'm so kind of, you know, it's so all consuming for me that I, I, I think, you know, to pair that back and have and be less engaged than you would have to be if you just came into things where a lot of things were given. I just find it hard to imagine, actually. I mean, you, you mentioned the casting. The casting, this is absolutely fantastic. All of the kind of supporting well and falling to the likes you know Donald Sutherland and people like that um but obviously let's talk about Nicole she she's such an incredible actress isn't she I mean you've you've worked with some brilliant actresses before where, where does Nicole kind of uh rank in that I mean she she every time she's in something she's she's just brilliant and again in this she she's at the top of her game she's an amazing actress she is an amazing amazing actress and she has you know I kind of joke with her that I think maybe she comes from outer space or something like she has this uncanny uncanny ability to to access somebody else's body mind you know the, when you know she comes to she comes on to location as Nicole Kidman and then she comes on to set and she's Grace Frazier and she opens the door differently and she um uh, drinks out of her water bottle differently when she's Grace every single thing she does is different but and, and and then when when you start filming with her, every take she does is different, and it one is more sad, one is more uh, angry, one is more and and she just does it, and it's such a generosity, and it's such a like like you it's, and 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 Hugh Grant does it as well. They both have that ability to just kind of kind of deliver the most outstanding performances that are completely unexpected, and 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 they don't, haven't had you know. Um, and so, so by the end, as a director, you have this huge, big chocolate box of amazing performances, and and you know each scene could be edited in six different ways and still be fantastic. And then you take a step back and you kind of go, um, okay, in the overall scheme of the arc of the story, probably this version is the right one. And then you kind of figure there's only one right version in the scheme of better things. But in terms of their performances, there are so many different amazing ways of doing it. I mean, it's it's so clear just from the cast that you've always assembled. The actors love working with you, but I always gather that you love working with them. Is that part of the joy? Because so many people think it's about the story, but I guess when so much of the job is spending time with with the actors and actresses, is that is that one of the main things you love from from your craft? Is spending time collaborating? Yeah, I love working with actors. I really love working with actors and I have a lot of I have a lot of respect for them and I think I also have a strong sense of how painful it is to be an actor and 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 um and I I just really feel I understand it very much and I yeah and I like it and I appreciate it
And I wanted to talk also about Matilda because I um I did the I, I for the last couple of years at the Berlinale I've I've covered the Shooting Stars event so I've and I'm, so so I spend the whole weekend with the the ten winners and if she was a shooting star a couple of years ago and I so I spent about four days uh, with her and you could I could just tell uh, she she had a star quality about her I was wondering how how you came to find Matilda and what it was about her that made her the perfect Elena for for this project. Well, she is a real star. I mean, she she's like, um, I don't know, she reminds me of Brigitte Bardot. Or she reminds me of a certain kind of um, era of European female stars who had that kind of sultry, erotic um, presence. And it's not like she doesn't make it up. It's just there. Yeah. And... Um, and she's a wonderful actress and she's really fun to work with. But it, she was also, we were also looking for, for, a, for someone who, who was very different, but who could kind of sort of um, m match Nicole in a way, or who could be a, a real competitor to Nicole because it's a tall order because you have Nicole that like sort of the most beautiful woman in the world and, 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 um, and and so who could pose a threat to Grace played by Nicole? And it was difficult finding someone. And and Matilda is completely, completely different. But she has that she has that strength where you kind of go, yeah, I understand that that Nicole is gonna be slightly um, you know, um, confused by this other woman. And one of the things I loved uh, watching this yesterday was just seeing New York, um, because I mean, I'm not sure if it's to do with the kind of the way this year's been, but it just I just missed being uh, traveling and being around the world. I wonder how you have you how you felt because obviously uh, with the nature of your job, you travel so often to film festivals, to sets, on locations. I just wondered, um, obviously this year, have you quite enjoyed the kind of taking a step back and spending a bit of time at home, or have you been desperate to get back out there and, and travel again? Do you know, I, you know, I, it's weird because because. Because this pandemic has been so tragic and has so many awful consequences for so many people. But I want to say that I, I personally have actually oddly enjoyed being at home um, and just being in one place and, 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 and even just, you know, being in my own house with, with my husband and, and, and not not being able to go anywhere because it's been ages since I've done that. Um, um, I do understand though, why you kind of, why those images make you miss New York because it, it, it also feels weirdly nostalgic. It's a year ago and it feels weirdly nostalgic. Yeah. Um, um, it's interesting. Yeah, I know that, I noticed that. I noticed when we, when I saw the mix uh, which was just recently because we haven't because of the pandemic I hadn't been able to come to London to finish the mix so we just did that very very recently so I saw all six episodes in the cinema in the mix and 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 I enjoyed the sound and I was very excited and I was working but in the back of my mind I had that nostalgic element of sitting there looking at New York and kind of wondering when is it going to be exactly like that again yeah, it's so funny. You're right, because I, I felt so nostalgic, but it's only, I mean, it hasn't been that long and I probably wouldn't have gone to New York in this period of time anyway, but I just, it's just feeling mm. that I think maybe mm. it's knowing that it might not be for a while that makes it quite um, sad. But anyway, um, I was wondering too, my final question really was kind of wondering what, what might be next for you and, and, and if you've kind of had any dialogue about shooting in a kind of social distance world and if you're, if you're willing to kind of go back out there and, and see what see what it could be like to make a movie with the new guidelines in place. You know, I just did a commercial uh, mm. the other week in London, so I I have been uh, we shot for two days, oh, nice. so I have been shooting with the new guidelines, and it's absolutely doable. It's absolutely mm. possible, um, and 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 the result is great. So so the one thing that was kind of oddly missing is that there's always like on a film set, there's always like a camaraderie. There's always that kind of you know, people hug each other and you are friendly and and here everybody's standing there with masks and social distancing and 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 
so so it was totally doable and yes but i was kind of missing a bit of that sort of natural warmth that usually are there on a film set yeah oh yeah because i got worried the other day that it could take a long time for that natural warmth to return but i hope i'm wrong um and my, my very so my very final question was just about whether there may be a have there been dialogue about a second series of the undoing because I've, I've only personally seen two episodes but i can already tell this is something i'd love to to see across years really these characters really are there's a lot of nuance and a lot of depth to them i think we've been joking about it yeah. <laughs> we've been joking about that's it the first but, step. Uh, <laughs> but that's but, but i mean mm. <laughs> that's as far as i can say okay well <laughs> Well, okay. fingers crossed. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Suzanne. Much appreciated. And best of luck with, with everything. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.